my name is Peter Parford and welcome to this basics video where I'm going to show you how to hang doors just like these. Now I've just very roughly put the two doors in place. Um, as it happens this door fits perfectly and so there's virtually nothing we're going to do to that. So we're going to concentrate on this door uh, for the purposes of this little video. Well, I can assure you that my doors are never usually quite as close a fit first time as this one is. Uh, but there's enough here for us to still learn some lessons. I've put a spacer under here, which is about the thickness of an old-fashioned English penny. Perhaps it's just over a millimetre in thickness. I suppose um, just over uh, a sixteenth, maybe uh, three thirty-seconds uh, of an inch. And that's raised the bottom and it's parallel uh, to the, that part of the frame. And now I can look at the rest of the door as it sits in the frame and see whether it needs to be trimmed. Now in this particular case, it could do with a tiny bit of trim on this edge in this lower section here. And a tiny bit of a trim on this side uh, near the top. So it's as though it's slightly skewed over. Uh, but the, the bottom and the top uh, remain nicely parallel to the frame. Now one has to decide at this stage whether it would be better to get it flush up against this edge and then uh, make the adjustments to the top and the bottom. But in this particular case that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it there and there because I do anyway need to make uh, the door a fraction narrower. It needs about uh, just under a millimetre taken off. So that's my approach. Now my hinge recesses are already cut out on the frame. Uh, I did that before the frame was fitted. And at this stage, because I'm going with this uh, bottom as my reference edge and it's in the right position, I'm going to mark where the hinges should be and transfer the markings from uh, the frame to the door. I'm going to do that now. That's the hinge positions marked on the door. Uh, before I cut those hinge recesses out on the door, I'm going to trim uh, the door off on the lower right hand side, the top left. I have to remember to put a mark on the door here and also here where I need to uh, cut a little bit off. Right, so I've got to take, this is the bottom right hand uh, edge here and I've got to take a little bit off and I'm just putting a little pencil mark there uh, to indicate when I get to a line I know I've got enough off. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm starting off uh, doing some extra cuts here and then lengthening my stroke and so on. So eventually I'll do a skim across the whole of that length, but I'll have taken more off this end than that end, but I'll still have a dead straight line. And that's plenty. I'm just going to give that a very light sand and we're done. And that's that. And we now do exactly the same process on the top left hand side. And again, I've just checked my mark is there where I need to take more off. So I'm going to start at this end. And this is the side which has the uh, marks here for my hinges. If you've looked at the video where I made uh, these doors, you may have wondered why I put a coat of Osmo Poly X on them uh, before I got to this stage. It's quite simple. I wanted to protect uh, the wood, in particular this oak veneered MDF, which is here. Now here are the marks for my hinges. The hinges I'm using are these 62mm ones, uh, which are brass but uh, chrome plated. And I've got a jig, which I've used quite a few times in the past. Uh, I always write on my jigs uh, what they're for. 62mm hinges, it's an 11mm guide bush with a 4mm cutter. Uh, and that was made up for one of my old writers, which I've got rid of. For Christmas, 
I was given this beautiful, this is the world's best medium size writer made by Festool, ZOF 1400. And the beauty of this system is that I've got an 11mm guide bush there and all I've got to do is click that into place and put the appropriate cutter in and away I go. Right, setting up this jig is very easy. We've got our pencil marks there and because we've used this jig before there are cut marks from the cutter in this front piece of plywood. And so all I've got to do is line up the edges of those cut marks with my pencil marks and then the jig is in the correct position. Once it's in the right place you just secure it with a couple of clamps just like that. So that's there in the right place just check that and the clamps are tight. Next we want to get the writer set up to the right depth. I've got my cutter in, I've got my guide bush in so I now move this down until the cutter is touching the surface of the wood that I want to cut. I then release the control here and tighten it up and lower the pointer and then decide how thick I want my cut to be. Well, because we've already got a hinge which is of the thickness we want to cut out, all I do is I lift this up and I can put the hinge there and then tighten that up and I now have a gap between this uh, rod here which is clamped in position and the post there and so all I've got to do now is to do a plunge down until that rod and that pin are in contact and that means I've now gone down by the thickness of that hinge. An alternate way because we've used this before is to reference off the cut in the plywood which we've already made. So there we go, we're all ready to go, we're at the correct depth and everything's in and set up, so away we go. And just a tiny trim of a little tiny corner bit that the writer can't get at, and that hinge fits perfectly. Now doing the second one is really easy now, we just position this so it's on our pencil marks and put the clamps on and away we go straight away. So that's that. Now before we uh, take this back to hang it, um, I'm just going to get one of my uh, little bits of cloth which has got some poly X left over on it from my previous uh, job and I'm just going to go over this edge like so and frankly this is all one needs to do uh, on this edge where the hinges are. You won't need to give that a second coat. Uh, unless you really want to, but that's completely repaired the whole of that face there and because it's been put on with a rag like this and you can wipe it off with a slightly drier one you can handle that straight away, absolutely no problem at all. And that's it, hinges on, we can now hang the door. Well that's it, that one's uh, uh, pretty good. Uh, all I've got to do now is put uh, a catch on there. I'm going to use one of my new magnetic ones. Well that's it, I've done it. I've put a couple of handles on and I've also put some magnetic catches on each door. These uh, magnetic catches are made by a company called Bunting's Magnetics and one magnet goes up into the door frame and the other half, the other magnet, goes into the top of the door. And when the two come close together, there's a very strong force of attraction and that holds that door shut really nicely. And it works on both sides beautifully. Now if you like this video, uh, please press the like button. If you think it might be of use to someone else, please press the like button because it really does help me. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.